no, I can't type. Welcome to my channel. Get the lighting right. Okay, so if you are seeing this, I don't know if it looks like it's pulsing and light to you, but it does to me. So let me see what I got. In the ah, that fixed it. That was weird. Let's see if it's in focus. Hi, Darla. How are you? Minimize. I am making myself a new journal insert as I'm knocking things off all over my room. Hi, sweetheart. Let's see if I can remember your name. I'm not the best at names. So I've almost finished this one complete, completely finished it. Um, so I want to make a new one. So I have one to go into. Diana, thank you. I have all kinds of papers written down here with names on it, but I have no idea where I've stuck them at. So I make ooh, my... Um, journal covers out of cardstock and then I do the whole piecing of paper to patchwork it or um, some people call it um, Franken paper. Lost my train of thought. So this is going to be my cover and I've just got these random pieces of cardstock that I have or paper that I have cut up. Hey Dana! And so we're going to piece those on there and I've also got some dictionary page here so we'll just find something that works hi gypsy so let's start with that one I um, have another journal in the works that I've got to finish but I really don't I'm not inspired to finish it tonight if that makes sense it's another soft cover journal. But it's turning out pretty. Ooh, gyros. I think that's how you say that. I'm not the best with uh, words, so that sounds good. Hi, Carrie Ann. Okay, did I miss? I don't know if my, my channel, yes, last week when I did my live, I missed people because I didn't even see their comments. And I was looking back, hi, Rhonda, at my live. And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't say hi to everybody. Oh, okay. How are you, Rhonda? Is things looking up? This is some Rhonda papers. Rhonda NC that's in our chat here sent me this happy mail a while back. And um, I love the paper, so I decided to make the cover for this journal out of the papers she sent me. I call her my cheerleader. <laughs> She's awesome. I hope y'all can hear me. I don't have my headphones on. My husband muted his TV and the air conditioner kicked off. So it's really quiet in here. Hi, Deb. How are you? So there's that. Let's put this one here. My husband, I'm sitting here going, help me, Rhonda. That's <laughs> what he usually does when we're crafting together. Mm -hmm. 
He's over here being good, listening to his, or reading his telephone, I guess. Let me see. Like that. That's good, Deb. I missed your live the other night. I I don't know what I was thinking. The notification popped up, and I was in the middle of reading something, so I cleared it, and it went right back out of my mind. That's how much. So we got Ashley all moved in last weekend. Got home, and she messaged me the next day, and she had to move to a new dorm, dorm room. Must be well. I don't know, Rhonda, if it's possible for him to be deep in thought. <laughs> but yeah, he's over here reading something. Sorry, the voice agrees. <laughs> she um. Wanted a single room. Well, they raised the price of a single room. So, hi, Ranger. Um, to almost a fifteen hundred dollars extra for the year. Well, we didn't have that. She didn't have that. So, she had to find a roommate and get moved into the dorm room. But thankfully, they helped her move since we were not able to. Because that's, you know, quite a drive to get back down there to move. Not that I wouldn't have done it if I needed to. But. I think I'm going to cut that. But this room has air conditioning in it. Which the one she was in was on the fourth floor. And no air conditioning. So now her new room is in another building with air conditioning. But the catch to it is it doesn't have a kitchen in it. So she has to carry anything she wants to cook across the parking lot and down a little sidewalk embankment type thing to what they call the towers to cook and do laundry. So I guess it's a toss-up as to which is better. <laughs> she says it's better than doing four flights of stairs. So. Yeah, and she's got a crock pot and a microwave. Yeah, no air conditioning is medieval, but it's, it's in the mountains, so it doesn't get quite as bad. As long as she has a fan and she had, we bought her a box fan. So she put it right in the window. She's not allowed to have an electric burner. They're not allowed to have anything with any exposed heating element. And so for Christmas, I think we're going to get her a Instapot so that she can cook in it. Hi, Sparkling Shore. How are you? It just seems surreal to me that she's in her senior year. Well, I'm glad you stopped in to say hi. It's kind of sticking up there. Good. I'm glad. Um, so, yeah, she's all set. She got her job schedule. She works Tuesdays and Thursdays. And it's kind of quiet around our house, other than the the dogs, you know, the babies that'll never grow up. <laughs> so, let's see, why do we want to put here? So enough about my daughter. I'm sure you're all bored with that. <laughs> it's it's just, like I said, it's kind of surreal. Yeah, the joy is a four-legged kid. So we have three of those four-legged kids. Just 
journal books are next on my list. Well, I started a tutorial series, but when I got to the last part, I filmed my video and YouTube would never let it upload. So I've got to do the sewing in of the signature part again. I, I love journals. I think I'm going to make a couple December dailies and put in my Etsy shop blank ones with large spines. Two pups, two cats. Yeah, I can't do the cats. I think cats are cute, but they're just not for me because everyone I've ever had has been certifiably psycho. For real. <laughs> Yeah, it does beat having rodents. We had a cat 20 years ago that was diagnosed with feline leukemia. She was she was my baby, but it really affected her her mind. Oh, thank you, Rhonda. She, um, she would hang from the door jam to sleep. And so laying down on the couch or a rug or the floor. Oops, that's crooked. Good thing this is for me and not for sale, right? <laughs> so the Winnie the Pooh um, little golden book that I made. The girl who bought it gave it to her daughter. It's for her daughter's baby book. And she t messaged me today and said she absolutely loved it. Thank you, Darla. I like the colors. The colors are different than what I usually go for, but I like them. Whoa. Did I spill my art glitter glue? Usually I'm more on the lighter colors. Oh yeah, our dogs do that too. I think that's just a trait. Our cats did it that did that. We've had several cats. I just don't want to go that route again. Let's see. I need some green on this side. I think I like it that way. I think everybody's dogs do that. Sorry if that got really pixelated. And I usually take the sewing machine to this, but since we are going to do this from start to finish, we are going to skip that point. Or that, that step, rather. Cracks me up. If we slept like that, we would get a kink in the neck. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't be able to walk the next day. That is for sure. So I need some of this brown over here. I'm going to this out. So is anybody else crafting tonight? I've been watching Johnny from the Junk Journal Shops live sale. She has some pretty cool stuff in there. Of course, you know, I, as a junk journal, you're going, I want it all. Every bit of it. Okay, so I want that to dry good. Even though it's art glitter blue and it is essentially dry, I want to make sure. 
your cat sitting again. I want to make sure that it is completely held down before we score it. So our next step is going to be to create a pocket on the inside. Oh, well, that's cool. I think I want it. My cut it out here because it can't be no more than five and a quarter inches so that it misses the spine. And then we're going to angle it. I have no rhyme or reason how I do things. It's just how my mind works. I can't explain it to you. Let's see. That front. Okay. So now we're going to take these little pieces and we're going to make a hinge for right here. Most people would probably just cut it wider and then fold it over, but now I have to make things difficult. So you just fold a piece of paper in half. Score it down the middle. And it's not really a hinge. It's um, hi, Kathy. It's a to let it have more space inside the pocket. If that makes sense, that way I can put like journaling cards, or if somebody gives me something and I want to put it in my journal. And I don't have time right at that time. I can just stick it in there with a sticky note on it. You hear two voices? Now, oh, my husband in the back background, maybe that was what you heard. Or YouTube's being funky. It's been doing that all day. Poor Johnny. And then we'll make one for the bottom. Give it a little extra room there. I used to buy my son a big Lego set for Christmas every year till he was 18, thinking I would take him two days to do it. He would put it together in two hours. Oh, wow. I remember going to my grandma's house and she had one of those, what they call hall trees. And it sat in behind the front door and she had an old suitcase and it was filled with Legos. And we would all go over there and sit and play with those Legos in the wintertime. In the summertime, you weren't allowed to because you had to be outside moving about. You weren't allowed to play in the house because grandma was not about to clean up after us. <sighs> If it was raining, you were allowed on the front porch. Hi, Sue. But if it wasn't raining, you better have your hind end outside playing. It was a fun memory. I love that suitcase of Legos. I guess one of my cousins, he lives in the house now, so I'm hoping he still has that suitcase. Because it was, it was cool. Cool memory. And then Johnny had this um, tin on her live cell a while ago. And it was the identical tin that my grandma kept buttons in. And she had this piece of linen fabric in there when, when I was growing up. And they had four little pearl buttons in them. And she always told me they were from her grandma's. Or from her mom's wedding dress. So uh, that was cool. I don't know where it went to after grandma died. Ooh, that's cool, Kathy. The other thing my grandma had was a pair of scissors in her chair on one side. Literally in the, I'm trying to show you, like, they were literally in between the arm and the seat of the chair. 
So no one else would sit in her chair. And she had um, a darning needle on the other side. Grandpa said it was so she, he wouldn't take her chair. Don't we wish we had the things that our grandparents had now that we played with then? It'd be so, so cool. Yeah, she was, she was a pretty smart lady. Hi, Laura. I would love, love, love to have one of her cakes. Oh, my gosh. Her cakes were amazing. The last one she made was... Um, for my high school graduation, and that was 30 years ago. So, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it was a long time. This one, I'm going to do a different pocket, I think. Hmm. Piece of paper. Gonna have to get the paper. The envelope back out family bonds that we have back to yeah the family bonds from back then are so much different than anything we have today Ouch. grandma said it was dinner would be on the table at six you better be there at 5 30 if you came at six you were going to get anything to eat because it was rude to be late there you go yes if only we could travel back in time that would be that would be really cool I know I got another piece of this paper in here somewhere. No, don't make that happen. If I could travel back in time and know what I know now, it would be amazing. Always wanted to go back in time and meet my dad before he lost his leg. Hi, Cheryl. Okay, so we're going to cut this and make this into a side cut pocket. Actually, I'm going to double it, I think, because it's just one layer. Of card of paper and not card stuff. So we'll fold it. And see where we need to cut it at. Laughing dog is Laura. Did Johnny end her sale, ladies? I guess she was going to, but then people started coming back in. Why do you have a what? Oh, little rascals. Okay. Here. Just like this. I'll put glue on three. Just had a gnat fly in front of my face. I'm so over summer. Probably hated by some for saying that, but I'm not a summer person. And yesterday was excruciatingly hot because I canned green beans. My grandparents lived three and a half hours away, only saw them once or twice a year, never knew my grandmother. My mother said she died of breast cancer six years before. Oh, I'm sorry, Deb. I never knew my dad's mom. 
she, well, I mean, I met her, but I don't remember. I was three months old when she died. And my mother's mother, the lady that I call grandma was actually not my grandma, but for all intents and purposes, she was my grandma from the day I was born till the day I died. She gave me my name. And if Kathy's still in here, you'll laugh at this. She gave me my name, Kathy Marie, and she spelled it for the birth certificate, K-A-T-H-Y. And then from that day on, every card I ever got from her, she spelled my name, K-A-T-H-I-E. She couldn't remember how she spelled my name. So it's always been so funny to me. Okay. So half of 11 is five and a half, right? I'm my good scoring tool. Everything I had, she spelled wrong. She wanted my mom to name me Catherine after her, but mom wouldn't do it. Okay, I'm gonna have to go back and do that again on the side. Oh no, are we buffering? I was hoping it wouldn't do that tonight, but that'd probably be too much to ask for my internet. Oh, okay. So we have the cover part. So there's our inside. And now we have these papers are just some that I have pulled out. Okay, Deb, thank you. So we're just going to fold them and cut them to size. Because the paper that I made the cover out is eight and a half by 11. So I'm going to put my terminal away. Because I don't want to blind y'all. And it uh, likes to glare. Wrong side, Cap. So cut these at five and a quarter. This is a piece of um, what's this called? It is a piece of a drawing pad I got at Dollar Tree, I believe. And eight and a quarter just so it has a little bit of a gap and then we've got a couple book pages which we don't have to trim these are from a book about roses which is the index pages we've got this old vintage um notebook paper. My sister-in-law found it and gave it to me. I love it. There's no holes in it. Let's see. 18 years of marriage on the first. That's awesome. Dan and I will be married 24 years on the 10th of September, which doesn't seem possible that it's been that long. Okay, and I have this envelope. It's just a craft envelope. I just need to measure it. It's going to be a little bit farther out. And then I've got these two craft stuff cards. We've been married for 24 years and we dated for 14 months before we got married. I 
And we have one child who will be 22 on Halloween. Then we have this piece of vintage music paper. I wouldn't trade my husband for anything. I like to I like to pick on him and he likes to pick on me, but I wouldn't trade him for anything. <laughs> if you can hear him over there, he says, except for maybe a paper pack or some cardstock. <laughs> oh, that's cool, Cheryl. I met Dan. Why did I just put that away? I met Dan through, um, they were mutual friends of ours at the time. We do still speak to his friend, but his, they since divorced and we haven't heard or seen from her in hmm, probably 15 years, maybe 16. Which is sad. But yeah, he thinks I'd trade him for a pack of paper. Now, if it was Prima paper, maybe. <laughs> It'd have to be some really good paper. <laughs> And no, we want to get. I just cut that wrong, girls. So we'll scratch that and start again. There's a couple Prima paper pads I'd like to have, but I am not buying any more paper. We have that store that's going out of business, and I went crazy with paper. This is a piece of K and Company paper. Deb, how it's our favorite one, the Susan Wingate paper. When I got married, I truly thought before I met Dan that I would be alone for the rest of my life. Hi, Jackie. And I remember. I was older. I was 25, 24, 25 when we met. And I remember walking in mom's house going, can I keep him? Because <laughs> that's just how my mom and I were. We always cut up like that. And she goes, well, you can keep him, but he's not staying here till you're married. <laughs> Thought I was going to die laughing at her. <laughs> She would not allow it. And my dad, he never said a word. Stamperia is amazing paper. Okay. And uh, there's one, something, something called Ivy, something in Ivy that I see on scrapbook.com. It's purple and butterflies. It's amazing, too. So four, five, six, seven. Let's bring me another piece or two. Because I use, well... Let's go ahead and put it together. You find it in your craft outlet? Oh, wow. We don't have a craft outlet around here. S yeah, Stamperia is, oh, I love, I want their, or Stamperia, or however you say it. I want their, um, 
price paper. Yeah, you don't get very many sheets, but that probably wouldn't be a problem for me because I would just hoard it. <laughs> so I'm better off without getting it. I think there's only like 15 sheets in one of their paper pads, isn't there? And I have no rhyme or reason to how I put these in the bat and the, in the um, signature. I just like to have a mixture. Ooh. That sounds very pretty, Deb. We're going to end with this envelope, but I am going to see if I can take it apart here. Find. I'm just putting that into where the um, they sealed it shut to open the envelope because I want to put my signature sewing into the envelope. Sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. The rice paper, oh my goodness, it looks and sounds amazing. Okay. So there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So that's good. So that's a good size journal to work in. Now I need my little handy dandy. This is just a template that I made for when I do multiple signatures, but I can use it because it's three hole punch for this one. And you can, but I'm not, go back through and clip this so that it's in, inside there. It does not bother me in the least. I can take some lace and put it along the edge if I want to. Let's see. I need to read some chat. I have um, 12. 12 pieces of paper go into my journals when I do these. Sometimes I do up to 15, but I don't ever do more than 15 in it. It makes them harder to sew in for me. Okay, so and and then I, I do the pamphlet stitch. If you have a sewing machine and it is a good sewing machine, you can actually put this amount, as long as they're not all card stock, in your sewing machine and just stitch right up the back. Which is what I did. Find the center of the signature, wherever it is. That's what I did on this one. That's obviously not the center. Right here. The signatures are sewn in that way. So. If you have a long reach stapler and you don't want to have to sew, you can do that. I don't have a long reach stapler. So I need a couple clips. <laughs> Um, if you've done this before, you, know, you probably don't need the clips unless you're really concerned about it staying in place. Since it's for me, I don't usually worry about that. I just really want to make sure that it's down in here as far as it possibly can go so they stay together well. But I will clip this down. 
can just clip it like that so it holds. If you have um, a paper clip or those great big jumbo paper clips, those work really well to hold it. I lost my clip. What did you throw in the ocean? <laughs> Jackie, if you have a money tree, you'd be the most popular person on the earth. Isn't it good that God didn't give us money trees? You don't sow. Well, you can you can do a hole punch and do the um, binding with the um, ribbon, or there's just any way you want to bind it. Like I said, if you get the money, uh, a long reach paper clip, paper clip stapler, you can just reach into the middle and staple it. They do it with the strings. I just do mine with a three hole pamphlet stitch or sew straight up the middle with my sewing machine. Lost my little pokey. Sewing, I love to sew on my sewing machine. So you just find the center and then poke a hole through it. And it's just, it's literally three stitches. The hardest part of this one is getting my um, thread to stay on my needle. So then you take your wax linen thread or embroidery floss or um, just any kind of thread, as long as it's just not regular sewing thread, it needs to be a little heavier than that but you don't want it too heavy because it will um, cause the holes to be too big in your journal. And you're just going to pull three lengths of the book and cut it off. i get my needle out. Oh, that's, so, that's good. I'm glad it was yummy. We had leftover meatloaf sandwiches and green beans and fried corn. Hi, Michelle. I looked at one, uh, a long reach one, and I thought, you know what? I might use it three times, four times. If I'm making a journal, I usually do just hand stitch it. So you go to the center hole, push your needle through. Oh, this is just a small one, Deb. Go either the top or the bottom. It really doesn't matter which one you go through on the back side and bring it to the middle. Now here's where some people do it different than I. Some people go back through this hole to the back and then come up this one and tie them. I go, throw things on the floor, from here to this hole and pull it back out. And then open my book and try without getting the, the um, thread. You can see that thread right there. Try not to get my needle stuck in that thread because you want it to go through the paper, not the thread. So you can pull it tight. Okay. Oops. Yeah, I use my desk to help push it through. Pull your needle off. You make sure your thread one on each side of the main strip going through and that these are pulled tight. What are we buying? Oh, that's not a bad price. $13. I think even I could afford $13. <laughs> mm. 
I'm still saving for the bigger tools. And I cut this off here because you're not going to see this inside string. I can't get the hold of that. Take my clips off. Oh, okay, Jackie. And then I'm going to shut this envelope in here and I'm going to reseal it. What kind of tools are on my wish list? I want either, a, I want a Cricut and I want the, because my hands hurt me so bad anymore. I want the, um, the Gemini for my die cuts. But I, I can still use my die cutting machine. It just, if I use it very, very much, my hands will ache and ache and ache from the arthritis. But, you know, I'm not going to complain about it. I just keep on going. So those are my two big wishes. And then what, someday a bigger camera. That's pretty much the only thing I'm missing is the, you know, it's the bigger, more expensive things. This is my favorite tool and it's really the cheapest tool in my craft room. My craft space is this pokey tool. I have an awl. I have my dad's awl. This was my dad's. It is an old Coca-Cola all that he used when we were kids to put holes in belt loops and you name it, he used it for it. So I got that. And then I've got one from um, that I got from Amazon. But I found these for, I think they were $1.19. And it was... They're called bead reamers, but they are the best pokey tools. You got a cut emboss. I love it. So cameo. Yeah, a good camera is on my list. Maybe the tiny attacher. That would be nice to have. But... It's not something I have to have. Okay, so there's that. And I think what I'm going to end up doing, because this piece I got too close to my edge. Yes. I see everybody using that one, that red one that was Tim Holtz had. But I had that in my hand, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to get this cheap one. And I love it. It works great. Vagabond 2. Is that the one by... Who makes the Vagabond? Too small. Um, yeah, I've discovered you don't want to get the art glitter glue too far ahead because it will lose strength over time. And don't get it too hot. Just telling you from experience. Tim Holtz, okay. Let's put a word on the front of this. I got art glitter glue last year to get through the winter. And not thinking about it, I had it here in my craft space. And the wood stove is behind me. Um, it got too hot and I went to, you know, because it's, it's 
not a super thick glue anyway, but when I went to pour it into my bottle, it was like water. So yeah, don't get it too hot as well as don't get it too cold. It's a temperamental glue. Uh, let's see, what word do we want to put on here? Natural. Nope. Let's go with this one. Beautiful. Yeah, it's like Goldilocks. <laughs> I'm going to trim this up a little more. And then I'll probably pull out a butterfly or something and put on the front cover too. Yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm an art glitter glue junkie. I, I will tell you, I need to order me at least two bottles. I'm not going to order as many as I did last year because I've still got one that's unopened. Maybe two that's unopened. Last year I bought six because I wasn't going without it. But since I got my sewing machine. I do a lot of sewing too. A lot of sewing. Okay, Jackie. I'll be on for a little while longer. I don't know how long exactly, but. Two weeks ago when I, I got off the. Um, the live, I literally said goodbye to y'all and hit the end button and turned around and my internet went out. I think that's why I like it, Deb, because it does dry so fast. And if you're doing using lace or something, you can let it get to the tacky point and um, then lay your lace down onto it and it will stick. Everybody loves the Fabri-Tac and it does hold good. I will not say it doesn't hold good, but it is so sticky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you heard Jan. I'm sure she would put it down. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. <laughs> Yeah, I do that a lot. Cuz I might well that's probably not straight, but you know what? It's it's okay with me. I have used Fabri-Tac. I have it for stuff that sometimes like buttons or something if I'm in a hurry and I don't want to have to sit there and wait for the tackiness, but No, I was just saying I don't get stuff straight either. That's just that's that's me. It's one of the reasons my channel is called Perfectly Imperfect because I never get anything the way I want it down. I do better as the years have went by. I've done better, but it used to be it's like, oh, if it could be crooked. I, I like the way Fabri-Tac sticks. And holds things, but I cannot, I cannot get past the smell. Yeah, it does ooze out and is kind of messy. But, I mean, it really does do its job for, fa for fabric. Yeah, sure, I, cho I chose that name because I'm not perfect. Uh, I don't think we're meant to be perfect. If we were, the world would be in a lot of hurt. Hi, Tanya. Right. My mom always said there was only one perfect being and they hung him on a cross 2,000 years ago. Get over yourself and keep on going. For a minute there, D Dana read that and thought, what? <laughs> I 
I know the colors are not perfect with that, but I wanted the butterfly to stand out a little bit. Thank you, Rhonda. Thumbs, thumbs, I can't talk. Thumbs are appreciated. So now I can do my pages in here. Do my I'll make some journaling cards and stick in there and I'll decorate it up. Yes, it is complete. I appreciate the thumbs up. Do you all want a sneak peek of the journal that I am making? That's 90, about 98% done. Deb, I, I think I do these in my sleep. I really do. They're my favorite type to make for myself. My favorite type to make for myself because they're, I can, and I learned this from Jan because I always thought, oh, I like the big ones because, you know, space in them. But I get to fill this up and I'm like, oh, I get to make another one. So that I think is the fifth one I've made myself. Let me get the book. I have fabric I put it on after I've had the ink out. This is just a, an old pillowcase, but it keeps my the fabric on my book from getting dirty in case I've spilt something on my desk or whatever. Ta-da! It is another soft cover book. And this fabric is from Joanne Fabrics. I got it on the clearance rack. It closes with this lace on the side. And this button satin covered. I believe it's satin covered. That's the hardest part I've had is getting that button on there. There's the spine. Thank you. And there's the back side. And then inside's not, the journaling tags and all that is not finished. <laughs> My husband's picking things up and he doesn't know where to put them. It probably should have been more of a spring journal, but it just spoke to me to do it now. And yellow this is my favorite color. So, and these, um, Tammy from My World and OKC sent me these filters that were dyed. Thank you. Yeah, the fabric. I think Dan actually filmed the fabric in the clearance rack at um, Joanne's. Thank you, thank you. And then this, I bought these three kits or three um, paper kits from Etsy and downloaded them and I'll have to find the lady's name because I can't remember what her name is or the shop name. And I print, when I print paper, I print them double-sided. More music paper. And then this is a book of poems that I don't know where I got it at, but I'll be using poetry pages for years to come. And then I tried my hand at the fabric ruffle. Where'd it go? So cute to make. I just cut the scraps that you cut to make your journal pages fit and then folded them into the full or ribbon, whatever you want to call it. And I tried my best to not make this one vintage, to not ink up any of the pages. That was hard for me. Thank you, Rhonda, because I'm a vintage girl. 
but I know not everybody is a vintage girl. Thank you, Darla. So I just bit my bit my tongue and cheek and did it without any vintage photo. Thanks. It is a true challenge for me. Um, this paper here is some of the paper, cardstock paper that I bought at Joanne, or not Joanne's, Pat Catan's. Um, they were like 20, 12 sheets and a thing, and you got like 15 free. And then I just cut it down the size and printed on the back of it. And vintage is just my favorite. This is about as vintagey as I got in this book. That and a little bit of the ephemera. Because I just noticed I don't have a lot of ephemera that is not um, vintagey. Oh, good. I'm glad they loved it. No, it's it's right here in the drawer, right beside me, where it always stays. But I just printed, or not printed, made tags. No, it didn't. It didn't come across wrong. This piece was already inked. It wasn't me. I didn't ink. <laughs> it has a little tuck spot back here. Just use this blank card that you can tuck something in there too. I thought, why am I sewing all this on here if I don't want to make some pockets? So I added a couple pockets. Like this one's a pocket here. I mean, it's kind of a little mix with very light vintage in it, if that makes sense. You like this look, Deb? The, um, I think it's beautiful. What did people do before distress inks? Um, probably coffee and tea. <laughs> Yeah, I think this would make a beautiful journal for somebody who is getting married. If that makes sense. Like a, a um, planning journal or a um, for your wedding or something like that. It's got a lot of pages. So these are just eph ephemera that I was working on. I love this piece of paper. Another pocket. This was a like a square doily that I got some somewhere. I don't remember where I got it at. And I thought I'd use it as a pocket, but it ripped too easily. And I printed on vellum. Oh, Dana, I couldn't live without my distress inks. And I made envelopes. And this is just some journaling cards that was in some paper pads that I cut apart. Don't want to bore you all with everyone. And then this is just folded over. Make a little pocket. I'm going to have to glue. Yeah, the page on vellum is amazing. Well, Deb, it doesn't leave you out. It just means that you just don't like the distressed look. You're more of a clean crafter, if that makes sense. Have you tried these brushes, Dana? Oh, the wedding part. Okay. That might leave you out then. <laughs> If you're not planning on getting married, but it can be used for anything. It can write any kind of story in it, anything you want to do with it. It just spoke to me as uh, as I was making it to something that somebody could use as a wedding journal. I love those brushes. The brushes you can put the ink on. 
I'll show you real quick. If you just, I'm not in camera. If you take your ink and just tap it, and then start on the outside, it barely shows you anything. It just gives you a hint of color. No, I mean white. Let's see. White. See, it's very subtle. So you can you can put very light distressing on. I'm like where you use the Tim Holtz pad like this. If I go to put ink on there, it puts a lot of ink. So they are different. I bought mine from Amazon. I want the silicone brush for the glue. Yes, that is in my wish list basket on Amazon. I think it is really cool. Because okay, I always forget to wash my brushes and then I have to throw them away. I can just peel it off. Is it Lorel maybe that I saw do that? Um, they use them for epoxy, but you can um, use them for glue or whatever. I think they're called for epoxy. And then this is just a belly band on that side. And this isn't done. I need to layer something else on there. It, it does. It looks, oh, no glue lines either. See, I didn't think about that part. I'm, uh, do you use Mod Podge, Dana? Because I'm probably like the biggest hater of Mod Podge in the world. Or as they say it, Mod Podge. <laughs> and I just use strips off of my paper to put on there. I like, if I'm going to use something for, oh, that's the wrong stuff. If I'm going to use something to collage with, I will use this, the Instant Decoupage from Aline's. Because it doesn't leave a shiny finish. I can't stand the shiny finish. But most of the time I use this. And I need to buy a new jar. The matte matte gel, matte medium. Or I use this, the, the trick with the, what's it called? Plastic wrap to make my um, papers with, decoupage with. Mod Podge, I can't stand the smell of Mod Podge. Oh. And then after I dropped it, What's it called? Um, on the carpet? It took forever to clean it up. Yeah, that was bad. I found that making journals if you take glue from the library store works awesome. So that's what I use the brush for. I do that, Rhonda, but I can't. I I I will remember to take them out four days later, and they're glued to the to the to the plastic bag. Yeah, I'm the biggest forget forgetter of cleaning my brushes. I love the difference, the contrast between the, the grays, the yellows, and the um, greens. Which finding the green to go with the cover was a little hard for this. Because everything printed more turquoise instead of the light mint or if it was light mint you couldn't see it I did a ruffle here and use it to hold my envelope closed oh put them in the fridge that would that might not be a bad idea it is it's kind of like a mixture of green and teal. I don't know if you can see it better that way or not. It's it's 
it's it's, it's an odd collar, but it's a beautiful collar. Thank you, Gypsy. I hope to get it finished this week and put it in my Etsy store. So I can sell it. And then I've got a custom order to do. Oh, okay, Deb. Um, I got a custom order to do for a sunflower theme journal. Oh, wow, Rhonda, three months and it was still wet. Um, and then I'm going to work on some, what is the word I'm trying to say? December dailies to put in there so that you know, if people want to get them in time to do a December daily, they can um, they can get them. They're going to be completely blank. Just the covers will be done with a folder or not a folder, an envelope on the inside of each cover, and then enough paper for 31 days. Because not everybody goes from December 1st to December 31st. Some stop at Christmas. And if they do that, then they've got extra days in there to put more pictures from Christmas. And it'll be um, cardstock so that you can put lots of weight on it without it falling apart. So. And this I haven't decided what I'm going to put on there yet. I've been altering playing cards and making book page pockets. I have done that too, Deb. Oh, cool, Danny. You're going to record a video. I'll watch for that. But I was trying to figure out a closure for this. And so I started going through my stash and I found I bought a um, D stash from somebody. Can't think of. My husband's laughing at me because I said somebody. Thank you, Darla. I cannot think of her name, but these were in it. And they were the perfect shade of yellow. I don't know if they were, they probably are vintage. They're three quarter inch. But sewing them on was my hardest thing. So that, I don't really like how that worked. So that might have to come off of there and try again. Thank you, Dana. I'm, I'm really enjoying working with the fabrics for the covers. It's, it's a different feel. It lays more flat than the normal cover, but it's, I don't know, I just like the way it feels. Thank you. So I couldn't believe how close those came to being perfect grays yellows teals yeah it's it's just gorgeous i've still got i've still got about three quarters of a yard to use so i may make a couple like teens inserts yes fabric is it does make a huge difference it's kind of a mint, minty green in my opinion, but this is, Rhonda, the um, lace on there is the lace that I sent you in that package. It's like against the white, you can see the, my camera's just not picking up. I've done one tapestry and I want to make another one. I just ordered two pieces of masonite board that's already cut from Johnny so I can try that. If you guys haven't watched Johnny, have you seen Johnny, Dana? I know Darla's seen Johnny and I don't know who else is in here that has seen her, but 
fabric is also okay. It's junk. Let me see if I can pull her link up here. She does some amazing, amazing journals. Um, Paste that is her link for her channel. It's Junk Journal Shop, and her name is Johnny. Check her out. She's really, really cool. Diamond painting, that is one thing I have not been able to get into. I think it's pretty when it's done. I just, I don't have the patience for it. Gypsy, yeah, as you've been, I've seen you on uh, the lives. Night, Sue. Thanks for coming. Um, Johnny's having a sale this whole weekend. Um, from her shop. She does has a lot of vintage stuff. I know you're not the does vintage stuff and fabrics and laces and stuff like that. I love I love her shop. Her and recreations by, by, by recreations by Brooke. I always want to call it recreations. <laughs> I've watched a lot of these girls. Laura from Laughing Dog. Wow. I think I better stop while I'm ahead. Yeah, Johnny was just on. Yeah. So, well, I think since I got my journal made to start it, I'm going to call it quits for the night. Get me some water and relax before I have to go to bed. So. Yeah, I get to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> Tammy, not. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. I appreciate it. Oh, <laughs> no, not Tony. <laughs> Um, thanks, Dana. Laura, we've had some fun together watching some of these lives, haven't we? <laughs> Night, girls. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for coming, rather. <laughs> I think I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can type good night. Nope, spelled it wrong. It, yeah, it just, like I said earlier, I think I do them in my sleep. All right, I will see you all next Thursday night. Have a great night. Bye.